Hey, hey, welcome to the Drive Motors unit. Uh, so in this unit, uh, we're going to teach you all about driving the little robots around, right? So the uh, crawler tracks, they've got a powered wheel uh, in the front here, and we're going to learn about using that. It's a great way to start with uh, mobile robots to drive them around some first. There's other pieces, but, but driving is kind of the most important thing. Uh, so we've got some learning objectives for you here. Students don't really care about learning objectives, but professors like to say them anyway. Uh, there's some prereqs. Uh, these are things you should have done before uh, diving into the Drive Motors API. We've done all these in class, right? So I just kind of put this in case somebody watches the video uh, that wasn't in class. Uh, the expectation for the Drive Motors unit is there's going to be a series of modules that you're going to work. Um, each person has their own like M folder where they can put code that they made. Um, and that's kind of like isolated in Git. That's your area. You know that nobody's going to write there except for you. Uh, then there's also an area called libs. Um, and libs is shared code. So I just kind of point this out up front uh, that you should uh, work as a team. Um, so obviously one person has to implement their individual like member folder. Um, other people should understand the code. Um, so they should, um, if they want, work it in their M file as well, you know, run it on the robot, see if it works. Um, but at a bare minimum, they got to understand things. Your M folders, everybody writes their own. Uh, the libs folder, uh, your team shares. So make sure that whenever you work in the libs folder, one person writes it, that one person commits it, and then everybody else does an update. If you're both typing in there, you're going to run into Git conflicts and you're going to cause yourself trouble. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to tell you the structure um, of how these different units work. The goal this time is to learn about the drive motors, um, and it's kind of got a project at the end of this. Uh, and the project for this one is called Drive Polygon. Uh, drive Polygon, the idea is that your robot's going to drive in, on the ground uh, in the shape of various polygons. So it's going to either drive like triangles or squares or pentagon or hexagon, uh, you know, as big as you want. You're going to make a program that tells your robot how fast to drive, um, how long uh, each edge is of that polygon, um, and then also how many sides there are in the polygon. So like three for a triangle, four for a square, things like that. Uh, just because it's easy to uh, kind of see a little demo. Uh, if we uh, show a, a finished so solution, you can look at it here. Let's play it. Um, I'm going to pick a speed that's uh, pretty fast. So we'll just do like 700. Uh, we'll do a square, so four-sided. Um, and then, I don't know, let's do a pretty big one. Let's go with 36 inches. He starts driving. First turn at 36 inches is a little short. Make sure I can fix that. And so my robot here, it's doing left turns because uh, it's doing a four-sided polygon. Uh, this four-sided polygon, so of course a square. Um, it's got 36-inch sides. Uh, it comes back pretty close to his starting point. Yeah, so he's pretty close, start. right? So um, expect a little bit of um, error there, and it's mainly due to your turns. Time, we'll do one more. Speed triangle uh, with 24 inches uh, on each side. Okay, so now he's going slower. So he's slower. He's, he's going to turn at 24, 24 and, he uh, and he's going to do a triangle, um, right? Uh, so I'll kind of cut it off here, but I think you got the idea. You're trying to make a program that drives polygons, uh, hence the name Drive Polygon. Um, and then your robot should always come back pretty close to where it starts. Uh, that one did really well, right? Really good. Really, yeah, I like that one. Uh, so that's the goal uh, of this unit, and you're going to learn all the skills that you need to, to build up to that. Um, but there's uh, you know a lot of checkoffs along the way. Um, and as you work this lab, make sure you get each part checked off uh, by a TA or, or by your instructor. Uh, that program is going to keep going until you enter zero for any field. Uh, there's also some special like tricks you can do with like if you put in negative four for the number of sides, um, it'll do a square but with right turns, right? And so there's some little things like that. So that's the goal. Uh, before we get into the details, I do want to tell you uh, a troubleshooting thing that might happen to you. Um, as you're learning to program, it is it is entirely conceivable that you will you will type something wrong. Um, and you will run your program and it will crash and burn, right? Happens, no big deal. Um, and so it just says like syntax error or something out of bounds, who knows. Um, whenever your program hits a, a crash, uh, what happens with this robot is interesting, is that it's got the, the main processor that's sending commands, but each motor actually has a, a microcontroller in it. So if you send it the command to go forwards at max speed, um, and then the brick dies, it stops sending the commands, 
this motor, it keeps on going forward max speed forever, right? Um, so what do you do? Your robot's running away. You're not even controlling it. Um, step one, pick it up. Uh, make sure you hold it uh, from the top, not by the motors. Um, the motors, so long as they're running in the air, there's nothing that's going to hurt the motors. The only thing that hurts motors, I have no idea why people do this, but if people like grab the robot and try to stop it, that's like the worst thing you can do for a robot, right? Don't do that. Um, it stalls the motors. It's bad for motors. Um, so what you need to do, robot's running away. You pick it up. Now it's spinning in the air. That's great. Um, unplug uh, the one that's by the B uh, that's for the left motor. Just unplug it just like a, a, a millimeter will do. Then plug it back in. Uh, do the same thing with C. Unplug it. Plug it back in. Uh, what that'll do is that'll cut power to the motor uh, and the motor's going to stop then. And when you plug it back in, uh, it'll start off in a stop position. So if that happens to you, just unplug your motors uh, and you'll be fixed right up, uh, ready to go again. So I just wanted to tell you about that before we got started. All right, come back next time. Uh, we'll start learning the API for these drive motors. See you then. Bye. <music>